Hello viewers, so welcome to my channel. I'm Hashem Ali Khan. In this video, I'm going to explain you about the other measures of central tendency. Last video, I have explained you the meaning of measure of central tendency. What are the averages? And uh, what are the objectives or uses of averages? What are the characteristics of a good average? Then what are the different methods of calculating averages? Arithmetic mean, median, mode, geometric mean, harmonic mean, many methods are there. In the last video, I have explained you about the first method that is arithmetic mean. So what is arithmetic mean and how to calculate arithmetic mean under individual observation, discrete series and continuous series. I have explained to you completely in the last video. So if you have not watched that video, I suggest you to go to the playlist of my channel. Select the subject statistics for management and select the first video. Then after that, you can continue this second video in which I'm explaining the other methods of measure of central tendency. So before explaining this median, then mode, just to take a screenshot of the points which I've written on the board, then I'll explain all the points in detail. Now, see carefully, median, median is simple words means middle, in normal language, the term median means middle, so in statistics median means the value which is exactly in the middle of a series, when the series is arranged either in ascending order or descending order, so first of all we have to arrange the complete data in the series in either ascending order or descending order. After arranging the data, find out the middle value. That middle value is called median. It's very simple. Now median divides the observation into two equal parts. So in statistics, median represents the middle point of a series. The value which is exactly in the middle of the series. Now median divides the observation into two equal parts. Because we are selecting the middle point, so median will divide the observation into two equal parts. For calculating median, first data should be arranged either in ascending order or descending order. So whenever you calculate the median, the first and foremost thing you have to do is to arrange the data either in ascending or in descending order. Then the median is the value of the middle of the series arranged in ascending or descending order. Simple words, median is the middle value after arranging the data either in ascending or in descending order that's all now quartile the median will divide the data into two equal parts whereas quartile will divide the complete data into four equal parts quarter means one fourth quarter means one fourth so quartiles means the data is divided into four equal parts so the quartiles divide the series into four equal parts, hence there are three quartiles Q1, Q2, Q3. Q1 will take 25% of the values, Q2 50% and Q3 75% of the data. So three quartiles are there, Q1, Q2 and Q3. The first quartile Q1 is called lower quartile. The first quartile which is denoted by Q1 is called lower quartile. The second quartile Q2 is the median itself because Q2 is at the center. So Q2 is nothing but the median itself. So already we have calculated the median so we ignore Q2. So normal circumstances will take only the lower quartile and upper quartile. Lower quartile is Q1 and upper quartile is Q3. Third quartile Q3 is the upper quartile. Now decile. <clears throat> decile will divide the series into 10 equal parts. Median will divide the series into 2 equal parts. 
quartile will divide the series into four equal parts decile will divide the series into 10 equal parts so there are nine decides d1 d2 d3 d4 d5 d6 d7 d8 d9 so d9 are the decides now percentile the percentile will divide the series into 100 equal parts so we totally we will have 99 percentiles p1 p2 p3 p4 like that it goes on up to p99 that's it now calculation of median the same method will be applied for calculating the median quartiles decile or percentile only the thing is we have to take in denominator 2 if it is median denominator 4 if it is quartile denominator 10 if it is decile and denominator 100 if it is a percentile that is the only difference remaining the formula is same <clears throat> now calculation of median individual observations for individual series median is equal to size of n plus 1 by 2 n means number of items how many items are there that is n so n plus 1 by 2 item that is the median lower quartile q1 size of n plus 1 by 4th item upper quartile q3 size of 3 into n plus 1 by 4th item so what you can observe here for median denominator 2 for quartile denominator 4 for third quartile multiply 3 4th because upper quartile will take 3 4th data 3 4th means 75 percent and lower quartile is one fourth one fourth means 25 percent <clears throat> so this is the formula for median under individual series now discrete series in discrete series median is equal to size of n plus 1 by 2 same formula but here we have to calculate cumulative frequency here we don't have any frequency but discrete series we will have the frequencies given so when frequencies are given we have to calculate the cumulative frequency CF so arrange the data in ascending order find the cumulative frequency CF apply the formula apply this formula and then look at the CF column and find out the value which is equal to n plus 1 by 2 or next here corresponding value of x is the median so after calculating this now you have to locate in the CF column locate in the CF column exactly this value or the next higher value and the corresponding value of x is the median just you listen carefully because while doing the problem the concept will be completely clear similarly we can find out q1 and q3 how we are calculating the median similarly we can calculate q1 and q3 just by writing 4 in the denominator instead of 2 we take 4 in the denominator that's it now continuous series in continuous series we will have the class interval 0 to 10, 10 to 20, 20 to 30 how to calculate the median median is equal to n plus n by 2 minus cf by f into i but before applying this formula we have to find out median class the median class is equal to n by 2 here in uh, discrete uh, sorry individual observation and discrete series we have taken n plus 1 by 2 n plus 1 by 2 but for continuous series we will take n by 2 the median class is equal to n by 2 so after calculating n by 2 locate in the cf column in the cf column exactly n by 2 value or next higher you have to locate and corresponding class interval is called median class is called median class so after calculating median class apply the formula median is equal to l plus n by 2 minus cf by f into i where L stands for lower limit of the median class whatever median class we got the lower limit of model median class is L CF ka matlab, cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class the cumulative frequency of the class preceding the median class that is CF and F is equal to frequency of the median class I is equal to width of the median class so this is the formula for continuous series in continuous series for median that's it so this is a complete explanation regarding the meaning of the term median and what are quartile per decile and percentile and then i have explained you about the different formulas for calculating median now i am coming to the next topic called mode 
First, we have completed arithmetic mean in the last video. Median just now we have cal calcul complete completed. Now, mode. Mode is the most common item of a series. In a series, the most common item or the item which occur more frequently, the item which occur more frequently in the given series is called mode. It is the value occurring most frequently in a set of observations. That is the meaning of the term mode. Now calculation of mode, individual observation, simply by inspection we can find out the mode. It is the value which occur most in a given series. No formula, nothing. If individual observations are there, simply by inspection we can find out which value is occurring more number of times. That value is called mode. Discrete series, mode can be ascertained by just inspection. We have to find out the frequency. So whichever is having the highest frequency, corresponding value of x is the mode. By inspection, no formula, nothing. But in some cases, mode is affected by neighboring items. Hence, it is better to make grouping table and analysis table. A grouping table has six columns. After making grouping table, we make an analysis table. But sometimes, the mode value will be affected by the neighboring items. So it is always better to make two tables, grouping table and analysis table. After making grouping table and analysis table, we'll get the right mode value, correct mode value. This is regarding mode. And what is this grouping and analysis table? While doing the problem, I'll explain you how to make the grouping table and analysis table. Continuous series, the model class can be ascertained either by inspection or by making grouping and analysis table. Then we apply the following formula. First of all, in a continuous series, we have to find out the model class. So what is model class? How to find out model class? Either by inspection you find out model class or by making grouping and analysis table you find out the model class. After calculating the model class, apply the formula mod is equal to L plus delta 1 divided by delta 1 plus delta 2 into I. So what is L? Lower limit of the model class. And delta 1 is equal to FO minus F1. FO minus F1. F1. FO is the frequency of the model class. Write down there itself in your notebook. FO is equal to frequency of model class. F1 is equal to frequency of the pre-model class. Before model class. And F2 is equal to frequency of the succeeding model class. Succeeding model class after model class. The model class ka frequency FO. Pre-model class frequency F1. Post-model class frequency F2. So FO minus F1 is delta. FO minus F2 is delta. That's all. This will give you mode. Now two points you have to remember while calculating mode. The first point is while calculating mode it is necessary that the class interval are uniform. All the class intervals are, must be equal, uniform. If it is not uniform we cannot calculate mode. We have to convert it into equal class interval. Secondly if two or more variables have the same highest frequency then mode is said to be ill-defined. In some cases Two classes will have the same highest frequency. Two classes will have the same highest frequency. In that case, the mode is ill-defined. When the mode is ill-defined, alternative formula for calculating mode is this one. Mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean. The so mode is equal to 3 median minus 2 mean. But this formula will be applied only under emergency when the mode is ill-defined. When the mode will be defined, when two classes are having the same highest frequency. Same highest frequency. That's all. So I have explained you about median. I have explained you about mode. Next thing is geometric mean. The geometric mean is the nth root of the product of n items of a series. Suppose in a series we have n items. So nth root of the product of n items product of n items will give you geometric mean example two uh, here i have given an example if there are two numbers say a and b then it's square root of the product of two numbers 
a and b are the two numbers if you want to find out the geometric mean of a and b multiply a and b a into b and put it under root so under root a into b is equal to geometric mean if only two numbers are there if three numbers are there a b c so threeth root of a into b into c a into b into c threeth root or we can say a into b into c to the power of 1 by 3 to the power of 1 by 3 like this for any number of values we can find out geometric mean but for calculating geometric mean we cannot find out 3th root 4th root 5th root like that so we use logarithm table to calculate geometric mean so how to calculate geometric mean individual series the formula is gm geometric mean is equal to anti log al stands for anti logarithm anti logarithm of summation log x by n this is for individual series discrete series geometric mean is equal to anti log of summation f log x by n frequency into log x by n then continuous series gm is equal to anti log of summation f log m by n m stands for mid values m stands for mid values that's all so I have completed the theoretical part of measure of central tendency. Inshallah in the next video we will start the problems on measures of central tendency.